Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is generally considered a safe therapy for most people. And many people can just go into a chamber, no questions asked. They just need to know simple things like equalizing their ears. But there are absolutely contraindications to hyperbaric oxygen. And there are handfuls of people that really shouldn't go in or need to be cleared by a medical doctor within a certain specialty before deciding to go into a hyperbaric chamber. So here are five categories of patients that really shouldn't go into a chamber or should at least be cleared before they go into that chamber to make sure that it's gonna be a good experience for them. And stick around till the end of the video because after we go over five categories of people that need to be checked out before they go in, we're then gonna cover the only two absolute contraindications. These people cannot go into a chamber 100% of the time. And so we'll talk about that at the end of the video. The first is emphysema. If somebody has mild emphysema, even some moderate emphysema, not only could they potentially go into the chamber, it could be very helpful for them. At the same time, somebody with pretty severe emphysema, especially with CO2, carbon dioxide retention, now the hyperbaric chamber could start to become more dangerous. That person can also be more at risk for oxygen toxicity because of that CO2 retention. And so that person needs to go to their pulmonologist and that person really needs to be cleared before they consider going into a hyperbaric chamber and hopefully getting the benefits that they will get, but it's not a no brainer. They should be checked and cleared before diving. Next is gonna be COPD. Again, mild to moderate COPD, this could be a really great therapy for them. They could have a ton of benefits to their cardiovascular system. Our heart, our lungs, our blood vessels, they all do really well with increased levels of oxygen. However, COPD, especially moderate to severe COPD, this person needs to be checked and cleared to make sure that they're a candidate for hyperbaric oxygen. Very specifically, a patient with an ejection fraction of below 25%, which would be pretty significant heart failure, that person cannot go in the chamber. They really shouldn't, with very rare exception. The next category is cancer. Again, hyperbaric, especially in the ha last handful of years, has shown could be very helpful for patients dealing with cancer, could help offset some of the consequences of radiation, could help offset some of the consequences of chemo, could also help improve the healthy tissue and improve the mitochondrial function required for healthy cells to stay healthy even during their traditional care. There's also some newer research coming out about using hyperbaric adjunctively with traditional care as part of the therapy itself for the patient. There are some chemo drugs specifically that could be synergists with hyperbaric oxygen, meaning chemo is a toxic substance and the oxygen could increase the toxicity of those chemo agents. Certain chemo drugs could also use up superoxide dismutase. That's the antioxidant in our body that helps balance the oxidation inside our cells. And so hyperbaric improves SOD function, and so there could be some great synergy there. But if we go a little too hard or a little too fast with our hyperbaric and we're increasing oxidation, at the same time they're taking a chemo drug that lowers their superoxide dismutase, we could end up in a situation where that patient becomes overoxidized. And so between the synergy of the toxicity and the reduction of the SOD, it's not that they can't go in, it's just that this isn't a no-brainer. The patient should be cleared Everybody working with that patient should be on the same team and everybody should be on the know of what we're doing so that they could work together to make sure it's gonna be a successful journey for that patient. If you like the information we're putting out, if it's helpful for you in your clinic or in your life, please share it with a loved one, share it with a friend, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help us get this information out to the people looking for it. The next category are blood disorders, specifically spherocytosis. Even sometimes sickle cell could be on this list. Now, these are patients where their red blood cells are not functioning properly. They're not shaped properly. And as a result, they're actually very at risk of anemia. Anyone at risk of anemia would typically benefit from hyperbaric oxygen because that increased oxygen is now being stored in the plasma of the blood. And we're actually bypassing the red blood cell carrying capacity, which means by increasing the oxygen in the plasma, we are compensating for or helping reduce the negative consequences of the red blood cells that are either inefficient or misshapen or just not delivering oxygen the right way. If we go a little too hard and a little too fast with our therapy, if we're using pressures that are beyond what the patient really required, it's possible that might have a negative effect on their red blood cells as they stand. In this case, this patient should talk with their hematologist and again, have everybody be on the same page with regard to, yes, I have this condition. I wanna try hyperbaric. The reasons for that are I'm 
mild or moderately anemic because of my red blood cell issue, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting enough oxygen into my cells, and hyperbaric will help me do that, bypassing my red blood cells. It makes perfect sense, but they need to be in the know and they should be cleared before going into a chamber. The last one is gonna be COVID, post-COVID especially. I will tell you with 100% certainty, we are seeing great responses using hyperbaric for post-COVID recovery, for long-haul recovery. That's absolute. And anybody in the field doing hyperbaric right now is going to tell you the same thing. It's unfortunate that we have so many patients suffering from long-haul COVID. At the same time, thank God there are therapies like this that are so transformational for patients to really get them out of a place where they've been stuck in some cases for months and even years at this point. Certain consequences of COVID are going to include damage to the lung tissue. And there've been a few cases where these alveolar cysts have appeared, leading someone to a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is not something a patient is allowed to go into the chamber with. And so if you have a patient who's post-COVID, who is still having trouble breathing, any obvious increased exertion leads to a massive reduction in their ability to breathe or catch their breath you might just wanna send that patient out for a quick chest X-ray. Make sure there are no alveolar cysts, make sure that there's no pneumothorax. If those are clear, we can go in and we can dive. So again, although I'm going over five reasons not to go in, it's really, the, most of these people can still go into the chamber. It's just that you can't take them off the street and put them into a chamber without at least a conversation and potentially getting them cleared from another doctor. And lastly, as I promised, what are the two only absolute contraindications you cannot go into a hyperbaric chamber for these two reasons 100% of the time. The first one is the inability to equalize your ears. So a tympanic membrane that is not cooperating properly. That could be in one or the other ear. It could be both ears at the same time. It could be because of wax buildup. It could be because of scar tissue to that ear. There's a lot of reasons that this could happen. An ear infection or a sinus infection, they're unable to equalize. If you cannot equalize your ears, you cannot go in a hyperbaric chamber, period, end of story every time, 100% of the time. That might mean you have to wait a few days. That might mean you have to go see somebody to get the earwax cleared out. That might mean you need to practice equalization at home before you try to go into the chamber. A patient should never have pain inside of a hyperbaric chamber, and if they're not able to equalize, whether it's because of a physical obstruction or because they don't know how, they can't dive. So that is absolute contraindication number one. Absolute contraindication number two is that pneumothorax that I was referring to with post-COVID. A hole in your lung, a popped lung, you cannot equalize the airspace around that lung tissue any longer. The way we equalize our ears is to physically equalize our ears. The way we equalize our lungs is simply by breathing. So as long as you're breathing inside that chamber, you're constantly equalizing the airspace of your lungs. If you have a popped lung, you now have an airspace in your chest cavity that is not in contact with your lung which means you can't equalize that space. That patient would have very sharp and very intense chest pain very quickly as soon as the chamber starts pressurizing. Rule out pneumothorax because that's literally the only other, that's number two, absolute contraindication. There is virtually no reason that somebody with a pneumothorax is ever going to need to get hyperbaric treatment. There is one exception to that, which is in very, very severe diving accidents. So unless you're treating very severe, very acute diving accidents, which include air gas embolism, there might be an exception to this rule. But generally speaking, for the overwhelming majority of us treating non-acute, non-diving injuries, there are two absolute contraindications to hyperbaric, the inability to equalize your ears, and a pneumothorax. Thanks for your attention. I hope you found that helpful. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.